ladies and gentlemen. In the letter sent Thursday, review first by Jerusalem Post, a uh, Palestinian media watchdog, um, it says that head of legal strategies Maurice Hirsch claimed that Palestinian terrorists carried out attacks in 2018 influenced by Fatah's glorification of murder and its promotion of violence on its page. What, why do you think Facebook is engaging in this type of BS? Boy, this I'm so glad we're talking about Facebook today. Every conservative that I know, all of them, have had trouble with Facebook. You tell the truth, you report the way things are, literally, Jermaine, and your, your posts disappear, or your followers are gone, or you get shadow banned, or the ultimate, you go to Facebook jail. I, there's nobody I, I know of that tells the truth about conservative values that hasn't been sent to prison on Facebook. So that's happening every day. You know it, I know it, and your viewers know it. But God forbid somebody calls out for the murder of Jews on a daily basis on Facebook and gets criticized for calling them out. Facebook does nothing. Now what this article that you're referring to, Jermaine, talks about is the fact that there are a number of hate groups calling for the murder of Jews in Israel, calling out for suicide bombers, calling out for shootings, calling out for bombings, calling out for stabbings. I'm not making this up. Look it up. It's on Facebook. Yeah. At least it was yesterday. I haven't checked today. Not one or two, but dozens yeah. and dozens and dozens of Facebook pages supporting Hezbollah, a world terror organization, Hamas, a world terror organization, Islamic Jihad, a world terror organization. These are groups that openly glorify murder, mm -hmm mayhem, and mass violence. And their Facebook pages are still up, and they're still following uh, tens of thousands of followers. They're still there. Look, ISIS recruits on the web, and they get people from Facebook. It's insane. So the answer to your question, Jermaine, obviously is twofold. Number one, it has to be brought to Facebook's attention on a big scale. Thank you very much for doing it today because what you're doing is helping. It's shaming Facebook, who, by the way, doesn't seem to have a problem with this content. So you might ask, well, is it Mark Zuckerberg at the very top or is it somebody 55 levels down sitting at a uh, computer in a uh, room somewhere deciding what the content should be. It's probably the latter. And most of them are very liberal, progressive, socialist, one world order, I hate the United States type of monitors. So you are the enemy, Jermaine. Probably me too. Mm -hmm. And I'll, we both know. And Islamic Jihad and Hezbollah and Hamas become freedom fighters, at least in the minds of those that are deciding what content is okay to push out. My hope is, as the article says, Facebook promises to take a look at this, quote, they had no idea the content was there. I don't believe that for a millisecond. They know your content three seconds after you put it up. Oh, yeah. They sure know my content, and yet they don't see the videos of suicide bombers placed on Facebook saying goodbye to their families. I'm going to blow up a security guard at a border crossing in Jerusalem. I'm going to walk into a synagogue and kill Jews, goodbye to my family, and they post these videos. And then after the guys get killed, they post a martyrs fundraising um, campaign on Facebook, the, you know, the Facebook equivalent of a GoFundMe mm -hmm. to raise money for these poor freedom fighters that died liberating Jerusalem. 
hey man, that's why it's one of our issues. People need to know the truth, and that is the truth. And like I always say, go look it up. You've got two hands, put it in Google, find out what I'm telling you, because it's the truth. Absolutely. So we need to make sure that people know what the real truth is. And the real truth is, ladies and gentlemen, they are silencing conservatives and they are pushing anti-Semitism on Facebook. That's what the real issue is. So, Jermaine, Jermaine before you move on, I want to add a personal note to what yes, you just said. I'm appreciative of you mentioning that part of the article. Uh, for those that don't know, Fatah is the ruling party in the West Bank. Um, and President Abbas of the Palestinian Authority is the leader of Fatah. And he's the guy that came to the White House representing the Palestinian people. And President Trump said to him, if you don't stop the pay for slay policy, where you pay people who try to kill Jews, and you pay people more who died trying to kill Jews, in other words, you give the money to their family, and if the guy gets caught and get to, gets sent to prison, you pay him for being in prison more than you pay employees of the Palestinian government. If you don't stop paying people to kill, I'm gonna cut off your money. Abbas lied to the president, said he would stop it immediately, went home, went back on the Palestinian website, went back on Facebook and said, we will never stop paying the martyrs. We will always have that as the biggest part of our budget and put it on Facebook. And what did Trump do? Cut off the money. Now here's where it gets personal. I would love it and I would appreciate it if your viewers Googled a man named Ari Fuld, A-R-I, first name, last name, F-U-L-D. Ari was killed, stabbed in the back, in a falafel stand store last year by a Palestinian that said he got the idea from the Fatah website. Go out and kill somebody and make money and your family will get rich, which by the way, they've already been paid by the Palestinian Authority. That man who was killed, and you can see the video of the stabbing, it's all over the internet, was my friend. I had lunch with him a year ago in Jerusalem. I'm very sad to say he's gone now because a killer got the idea from looking at the website that Jermaine just mentioned, the website that's still there.